carryovers are normal i mean how did you know that you don't have score because they couldn't find your script like i literally had to trace my name down to be sure that this is my result this one i personally struggled to believe it if i did not have the courage to contest that result and go to the senate i would have just gone with okay i got 10 over 100 let me come next year for my right exam you can do your best do your very best and still get a carryover hi guys hey loves welcome back to my channel my name is goodness andrew and if you're just seeing this face for the first time welcome and if you're a returning subscriber hi boo i see you thank you so much for watching my videos again now just before we jump into the discussion of the day guys please if you're watching this video just help me give this video a thumbs up i assure you you're going to like it and of course subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed and leave a comment in the comment section down below or when you're done watching this video so as you can tell from the title today's video is going to be a sit down video of me telling you the things i wish i knew before getting into a federal university in nigeria yeah so i am still a student i'm still an undergrad student in a federal university in nigeria over the years i've learned a few things so today i'm going to be telling you guys the things that i wished that someone had told me before i gained admission into a federal university in nigeria in the course of this video you might find me looking down this is because i made notes and i'm just referring to my notes just to be sure that i mentioned all the points that i listed down so yeah let's jump right into the video now the number one thing i wish someone had told me is that it is a community of its own yes like i know this is like basic this is like i mean how did you know that but i mean coming from secondary school i knew the university was definitely going to be like a bigger like space but i just really wasn't prepared for how big it was going to be guys this is literally a whole different community on its own and i just wasn't prepared for like that crowd and i was i mean I, I attended a private um secondary school so coming into a federal institution was just different i didn't expect the number of people that were in my class as my classmates i remember the first lecture i attended i genuinely thought there was like maybe a faculty assembly or something there were a lot of people i was like what is going on here like how am i supposed to hear how am i supposed to like participate in the lectures if there are like this many people in a class so like this was one of the things i wasn't prepared for i was already used to that system of you know few people in a class each student getting attention from each teacher you know how private schools can be now so i was so used to that setting and coming into the university it took me a while for me to adjust to you know coming to a class where public address systems are used coming to a class where i mean if you don't come to class like 20 minutes before time you, have, you best believe you're going to sit at the back sometimes guys you even come to class like 20 minutes 30 minutes before time and people have kept seats for themselves i couldn't understand it so yeah this was one of the things that i wish someone had told me before i got into a federal university the next point here is that i wish that someone had told me that carryovers are normal yes i said it carryovers are normal now when i was still in secondary school i mean when i used to hear my sister tell me ah this person has a carryover this person i guys i not say extra year carryovers this person has a carryover this person is writing this course i used to see it as ah this ones they are not serious with their life oh they don't used to read let's go and party let's go and shalaye <laughs> you know how nollywood movies now they used to go and smoke and drink and party they don't used to read <laughs> hey god <laughs> guys it was when i entered uni that i realized that this was pretty normal like i'll be having random conversations with like people in higher classes and one of them will be like oh i'm even taking this course with you guys like this person is randomly saying me no like shame you get it's not like the person is telling me like in this hush hush voice this person is telling me oh i'm taking um mass one to one with you guys so please tell me when you guys are having the lectures blah 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 and i was just like what so i had a conversation with one of like our senior colleagues then and i was asking him oh i thought 
carryovers were like bad and people that had them were unserious and everything and he was like oh yeah don't get it twisted carryovers are bad carryovers is not, are not what like anybody looks forward to and yes people that don't read do get carryovers but then you need to understand that in this system in this setting you can do your best do your very best and still get a carryover so he said to explain to me that people are repeating like you know different courses not because they failed the exam some of them is just i mean there could be your script is missing missing scripts that's a thing so you can literally write take an examination submit your script do the necessary things and a lecturer would misplace your script and they will tell you that you don't have score because they couldn't find your script and it's not their fault like it's just like oh we couldn't find your script no score for you come and write it next year i'm like say what now <laughs> And then he told me another thing in the university, trust me, it's not about your brains. It's not about your brains. Grace of God is important. Like, the guy said telling me of cases where some students have actually gone to contest their results. Like, oh, I know what I wrote, that kind of thing. I know what I wrote. They had to take the matter to see it. Like, I'm so sure of what I wrote. I can't be getting this score. So, and... I mean, he told me one or two cases where the matter was finally resolved and it turned out that the student actually did well in the exam, but the lecturer just, you know this thing of they want to write 70 and they write 10. Hey, Jesus is Lord. God. I was hearing these things and it was just sounding like Chinese to me. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean that I score a 70 and you mistakenly wrote 10? So, if I did not have the courage to contest that result and go to the Senate to like contest that result or something, I would have just gone with, okay, I got 10 over 100, let me come next year and come and write the exam. Hmm. Wow! And then, there's the normal one of, ah, she refused to see the lecturer now, or he refused to settle the man now, so that is why. Now, guys, I did not say, I did not say, that i have experienced any of this particular point i just mentioned i did not say that i have personally experienced it the whole not settling lecturers and stuff i didn't say that but i do know one or two people that have experienced it in the university of nigeria and they had to rewrite the course because they did not see lecturer they did not do him well <laughs> The next point I have here is that nobody cares if you pass or fail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's only you and your family members that care if you bloody pass or fail. You know, in secondary school now, teachers really do pay attention to you. Like, if this child is failing, they'll call your parents. They would, you know, teachers will be suggesting ways for you to, you know, get better in school. Like, there is that attention. Like, you're accountable. If you don't do assignments, somebody's going to come and flog you. If you come late to classes, somebody's going to flog you. If you don't come to school early, you know those kind of things. Guys, in the university, nobody cares, oh. You can miss lectures for the whole semester and nobody's going to notice. Nobody's going to say, who is this person, oh, that has missed? Let's find out. Let me go and find him. What's his name? Let me check his student profile. Let me call his father or her father. Ain't nobody going to do that. <laughs> All they know is, um, if you're doing a four-year course, once your four years elapses, they're going to kick you out. And then if you do have an extra year, you just come back and keep writing courses. But you see that thing of somebody, you know, making a conscious effort to look into your matter, to tell your parents they're not coming to class. Ain't nobody gonna do that. Like here, you get academic advisors, oh, good and fine. But majority of them, they're not advising you on anything. They don't actually care. I mean, some people are lucky to get good um, academic advisors that actually, like, you know, keep tabs on them. Not just signing off course registration forms for them. I mean, kudos to people like that. But for the majority, your course advisor is also not going to care. It's not like they're going to be held accountable if you pass or you fail. So they really just don't care. Another thing I wish someone told me was that that you a brainiac in secondary school does not mean that you're going to make it first class in the university mm -hmm. this one i personally struggled to believe it how <laughs> like i just couldn't believe it and guys this is the gist here yeah? in secondary school i was one of those people that always be like top five top three even there were times not once not twice that i did come first in class in secondary school so we were seen as you know some of the elites 
and then i got into the university and i felt like okay yes this is a class of like over 400 people but we could still do this at least first 20 you know we'll still be juggling our gp between 4.0 to 5.0 that was what i told myself and that was what i believed but then when i saw my first semester results in first year <laughs> Uh, like i literally had to trace my name down to be sure that this is my result do you get so, and i was i was shocked now in my first semester in first year i think i made just one a i think it was just one a and i just i couldn't believe it but then in first year we're still doing basic biology chemistry i mean a little bit advanced but yeah and these were things that i was doing in secondary school so i was like what is going on so after checking my results i was like okay if this is my score like just mostly b's and i mean a little bit of c's and just one a i was feeling like mm. it means that this course is like and nobody passed now you get it? like i was seeing myself as the yardstick like i was the standard so i was like if i can be getting this kind of scores even if there are people that scored above me it won't be that much i was seeing like okay let me say in this course if i scored like let's say 65 Maybe the person that is the highest overall probably scored like a 70 or a 72. Until I took my time to go through the results. Guys, some people scored 80 in a course I scored 65. Some people scored 90 in a course I scored 65. I was just like, what is happening? My God. Hmm. Hey, God. What is happening? Like, I couldn't believe it. So yes, like this was like my first tough lesson that trust me, the fact that you're a brainiac, the fact that you are going for cowbell maths and you are collecting all the prizes. Correct. Find the LCM of six AB and three. Six AB squared. I mean, you could still do it. Don't get me wrong. You could still do it, but you need to understand that you're coming into a community of different people from different walks of life in your school. You were probably in a class of total 60 people and you were coming like first five out of 60 people that was just like measuring your mental in your academic intelligence with 59 other people but now you're with 400 500 people you don't know where these people are coming from <laughs> and then don't forget that you're probably mixed up with people that have probably tried jam like three four five times there are even people in your class that will probably even be doing their second degree so like you're not you're really not just with only your mates so just prepare yourself that when you're coming into a federal university especially i'm not saying that it's not possible for you to maintain your academic record that's not what i'm saying all i'm saying is just be prepared that you are going to have to work harder that energy you're putting into wire can jump probably have to triple it and it's harder because you are now free you're not accountable to anybody nobody is keeping tabs on you so it's even harder for you to consciously tell yourself like i want to read this was like one of the major things like the major major things that i struggled with when i just got into the university last point i have here um i mean there are other points but i don't want to stretch out this video like way too long you guys just tell me if you want a part two to this video but for now the last point i have here is that you are going to be fending for yourself it sounds basic but you are going to be fending for yourself <laughs> you may not understand what i mean but let me break it down now in the federal university unlike private universities there is still a very good system in private universities in the federal university there's a system but it don't quite work so in the federal university here you're going to hustle to get bed space and this hustle I mean, it would have even been better if it was a come and line up, you know, first to come, first come, first serve kind of thing. It's not that too. You're going to be hustling online just to assess the school website and be able to apply to get hostels. Now, in this hostel application struggle, Mago Mago Day inside though, people actually bribe people to get hostels that they have to now pay 20k for. You probably be paying somebody almost thirty to forty thousand naira as bribe for you to get a place to stay where you will not end up paying twenty k as like your rent for the hostel. Like I don't know. Don't be juju be that. There is that hustle, and then the fact that the hostels are not even enough to accommodate students, so a good amount of the students find themselves living off campus. That's hustle. That's you friendly for yourself. <laughs> You're staying off campus. 
even if you're staying in the hostel nobody is gonna cook for you inside all this academic struggle you are supposed to be making your own meals now if you stay off campus you're going to be paying light bill you're going to be buying water if you're school in Enugu state because there's no water here you start paying bills like i feel like this is like an eye opener to life outside school in just few months ago nobody was tasking me i did not know what nepa bill looked like i didn't know what it meant like to pay nepa bill and then suddenly i'm just dumped somewhere and this is my new reality surprise motherfucker so like if you're getting into a federal investing let me just let you know maybe your baby of the house or your mommy's favorite boy daddy's girl my dear you better toughen up oh, because hmm. wow like i don't know i don't i don't want to scare you do you get i don't want to scare anybody watching this video but i just want to let you know that that your baby baby are doing you need to drop it in the house you guys you need to drop it in the house because you're stepping into a totally different world and nobody cares about your feelings um just to add this as a side point i just also wanted to add that if you're in a federal university i mean i have done my calculations and i've looked at things and to be honest eh, if you begin to calculate what you spend like in a session trust me you will have just gathered that money and just paid for a session in private university i am the one the way your son don't need it. like if you are if you're a student in UNN please do your math and then if you stay off campus I beg you do your math you could have comfortably gathered your price is just that you know Nigeria now it's hard for us to just like push out a chunk of money all at once just for certain things for people that are like average Nigerians if you actually sit down and do like your financial analysis and break down like your spendings throughout a session you could have actually paid your fees in a private university because I mean you pay your fees here you pay for lodges and now lodges are stupidly expensive here for a simple self con like a room kitchen toilet and bathroom maybe a little bit of balcony no that's what somebody will charge you to 50k for then the unnecessary dues that just keep coming up they'll tell you departmental dues faculty dues if you're someone that like joins associations in school you pay dues for that you do um term papers you do seminars all these things you have to be printing out papers you have like a presentation that you guys also have to sew a uniform you spend money on that you spend money on food you buy water every day in jerry cans you buy water every flipping day you take transportation to school because you stay off K. So you're probably always using a shuttle. You will think it's just 15 naira now. It's just 15 naira I'm using for shuttle. But calculate that you're 15 naira for all the days that you go to school. Then there will still fix class on Saturday. You will still go for it. Baby boo, you're spending so much money. Like you are spending as much as the person that goes to a private university. You still feed yourself. If you're a baby girl, you make your hair. I mean, as a girl, you buy pad, won't you? You will eat. Once in a while now, you want to buy food. It's not every time you want to be cooking. It's not every time you want to buy food stuff. You will buy gas. Guys, it is hard. Like, it's a struggle here. So, yes, guys, I didn't want this video to go this long. I don't even know how we got here. If you did enjoy this video, though, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Tell me, are you in a federal university? Tell me, what are the things that you also wish someone had told you before you gained admission? What are the tips and tricks that you want to share? You know, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let's discuss, let's interact. Let me know your own opinion on this. And also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the post notification bell button down below so you're notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you so much, guys. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye, guys.